Chris Folk, how are you guys doing? Good, good to see you, good to be with you, sir. Absolutely, absolutely. Are, you guys are in Venice, Venice Beach right now? No, we're actually in Nashville right now. Ah, nice. Is that where you're spending the, um, this time? So, yeah, Adam and I are spending it here. Um, so we're, we're split up actually. Adam moved to Nashville from Venice about, what, two years ago, a year ago? Oh, okay. Yeah, a little over two years ago. The rest of us all live in, in Los Angeles, still though, in Venice. being myself, Frederick, and Sebastian. Um, yeah, and, and yeah. I personally uh, have been camping out here, working on music with with this guy for a few That's weeks. That's cool, man. Well, good, good, great good. Time. That's great to hear. That's great to hear you guys are being productive. Let me introduce you guys to my audience. Uh, we're very excited to have you guys. You guys are like such a great band. Um, it's hard to describe your, you guys sonically because you guys have a unique mix, right? You guys have a little bit of folk, a little bit of uh, indie, electronic. You guys are awesome. Uh, and we'll talk about your new song, Queen of the Desert, in just a second because what a, what a jewel you guys created. That's a powerful song, guys. That's good. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, man. Absolutely. You know, by the way, I saw you guys in 2015 in the summer in Atlanta in this little venue called Vinyl. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's like one Yeah. Of that's when you guys first came into my radar. Um, yeah. You guys did this sick David Bowie cover. Okay. Suffrage City. Yeah. That's like the first thing that comes to my mind when I, like when I first saw you guys. That, that sick, sick cover. I'm but so anyway, you got to see us back then because that, that feels like another lifetime ago. I know, right? What the hell, man? Crazy. But anyways, so uh, Bill, how's your family in Pennsylvania? Adam, your family is in Gulf Breeze. Everyone all right? Yeah, they're all good. Good, yeah, good. Everybody's hanging in there. Yeah. Glad to best. hear. Glad to hear. And well, obviously, look, you guys are such road warriors. Like we just said, you know, I saw you guys in 2015, but you guys have, you know, supported uh, so many groups, Bastille around the world. You guys have been on the road for the better past of, of half, almost a decade, quite a bit. Has, has it been hard this time to just kind of like lay down or has it been like a blessing a little bit to just take, take a account of what you've done and take a breather? I think it's been both, honestly, because like you said, we've been going so hard on the road even while we're uh, making records and while we're recording. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's, it's just a lot. And um, now it's interesting without, when you take away touring, um, it's really forcing us to focus just on the music because that's all we have. Um, and completely kind of focusing all of our energy and attention on the craft of writing, recording, which has been great. But, that's also not to say that we don't miss it incredibly and we miss of course very very much and can't wait for a absolutely. time when we can safely do that again absolutely man absolutely and i want to talk to you guys about your new song in uh, just a second but i want to go back to the beginning for a little bit if you guys if you guys will you guys met playing in separate bands right around like nine years ago maybe um, Adam was writing songs for a side project if i if i if i have the story right and along the way Adam wrote the struggle right which is uh, one of the first uh, amazing songs that you guys did. Uh, tell us a little bit, Bill, about that merger and how this like genesis of the band started. Yeah, sure. Um, so Adam and I were playing a band in Los Angeles. He was one of the first people I met when I moved out there, actually. I moved without knowing anybody, no, no ties or anything. And bluegrass. Yeah. Yeah, randomly. Bluegrass band, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy threw a neighbor through an apartment that I somehow, that's, I mean, that's a whole other story, but we <laughs> playing in this band. And that's a lifetime ago too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we're playing in this band and then I guess around, I don't know, a year or so into that band, that's when you had met Frederick and you guys were writing together. Yeah, I met Frederick and um, Sebastian. We, we were writing, uh, just, we were just in the studio just writing random things and just right. being creative and stuff. And that was when we had written uh, a series of songs, but the struggle was one of them, and then that led to uh, some somebody's friend 
uh, knew somebody with a blog. The blog was called Burning Ear, mm -hmm. and um, and they just he just put it up on on SoundCloud, sort of without even telling us. I think ah, the SoundCloud era. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah. So it was under a different name. It was under Grizz Adams. Nice. Yeah, Grizz Adams. Yeah, and I think it got you know it got thousands of plays. That's big. Overnight That's or crazy. something. Maybe. I love how we're talking about SoundCloud now and it sounds like we're talking about MySpace now. You know what I mean? It sounds like <laughs> like really from a different lifetime ago, but it's so, but all at the same time so recent. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great that that song picked up. Uh, when you guys do a song like The Struggle or, or maybe Heavy Crown, for example, do you guys know that you're, putting, that you're putting out good shit like as you're doing it or is it more like, you know, you don't know? I think, I feel like, our main thing is to put out music that we want to listen to. Yeah. That's you know? a good way to start. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and uh, I think if it feels good, then it, hopefully that it, that it is good. You know, I think yeah. a, a guiding kind of principle too, that actually came up today. We were, we were writing with somebody and uh, we reminded ourselves um, that if a song can feel good just with an acoustic guitar and a vocal, then you can build on it from there. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, if you have the good, the good structure, right? That seems to be um, a principle we, we try to keep in our minds pretty often. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because, you know, you guys lyrically have been compared to Bruce Springsteen and so many arena, you know, big guys. That makes sense. You guys are lyrically very strong. I like that. Um, all four of you guys are producers. Adam, I want to ask you this because that, I thought this was super interesting. When all, you guys, when all four of you guys are producers, how do you guys, I mean, for a lack of a better term, like how do you work on a project? Because normally you hear about the greatest records and, you know, you have Daniel Lanois, you have whoever the fuck, and they put their stamp on a record. Uh, so I'm just curious, like interesting, obviously you all have your own styles. How, how does that work, that synergy? Well, I think on this new stuff, we worked with Rich Costi, who, who right. produced the new stuff. And, um, you know, it's been yeah really nice to take it out of our, out of our hands and let someone else sort of, you know, chisel away at the vision that we've created, mm -hmm. you know, but sort of like, you know, chisel it into something that's, uh, you know, the meat and potatoes of what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. That's great. I want to ask you guys about a few of your songs. Um, about last month, I went to visit my nephews um, here in Florida as well, eight years old, and they're watching in Netflix, Mr. Peabody. And uh, this fucking song comes on way back when. Oh, Great yeah. fucking song. I took the opportunity and I told, I, you know, I, I told them I teach them about music. I'm like, that's a good fucking song. Yeah. And I told them why. But, you know, what does it feel like, guys? Like, have you guys thought that there's some kid right now in, around the world, Latin America, Europe, whoever, that are listening to your music? Like, it's yeah. out there just reaching these crazy generations. It's crazy. I mean, we kind of, we didn't really realize that that movie was going to be, we, we didn't really know, you know, like we had, they asked us to write something for the scene and like the way it happened, it, it worked out so perfectly because we didn't know that there was a, there was a character named the way back. <laughs> and we had written this song called way back when, and we had right. no idea about the way back. So when we turned it in, they were like, well, this is perfect because there's a character called the way back. And, um, it was just really serendipitous, honestly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Bill, I want to ask you about um, Waking Up the Giants era, 2016. Uh, heck of an album, you know, compared to Bruce Springsteen, like I said, so many greats. Uh, and the drums on that, Bill, by the way. Uh, what's that song that's always in repeat for me, that your drums are sick? Hymnals. Uh, Holy shit, man, your, your drums there, dude. Like, that's like, that's another level. Got to tell you, that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, how do you guys look at this era? This is like uh, when you guys started hitting the mainstream a little bit. You were playing Radio City Music Hall, playing with like major venues. You know, it's been five years ago. How do you look back at this time? Um, you know, I look back at it, especially, I guess, from a drumming perspective and a musical perspective um those shows were the first time kind of in my life that i was playing stages that big and yeah. it really impacts the way that i think like my drums sound when you hear them on stages that big and we played red rocks mm -hmm. for the first time well, the only time but for the first time uh and i hit my <laughs> drum and it just created a sound without any microphones on it or anything that i'd never heard before because i'd never played nice. drums in a setting like that um 
I mean, drumming in in an arena too is such a different thing than drumming in a small club or in a little, you know, what a hundred cap, two hundred cap room. Sure. Um, it's is it hard to get your sound, the Grizzfall sound, in like a twenty thousand seat arena? Um, I think it's. I think it's really fun to to get the to Grizz folks out. Yeah, to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little uh, finagling, you know. Like we don't usually get it right on the first try. I right. Think whatever intricacies get lost in the the wash of sound though are made up for tenfold in energy from the people that are there. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And uh, Adam, what's some of these? Um, you know, you're the front man. You're the uh, you're right there in the middle, singing your heart out. What's some of those pinch me moments live that you guys have had that you that you see as a front man that you've seen some crazy shit like I don't know in the crowd that you're like, wow, this is this is surreal. What mm -hmm. I'm seeing. Uh, I think you know one time we were playing in Milan. Um, we were on tour with Bastille, and mm -hmm. we, uh, we were we were playing one of our songs, Cosmic Angel. Yeah, and uh, at some point in the middle of the song they were they had their lighters up or their phones and they were just going back and forth and it was like, those italians are the best huh yeah it was, it was straight, straight from a movie you know and i just kind of i don't know it's just just a moment where i realized we were we were like really in this all in, in this together with all of these other people amazing you know i think that's what we all miss you guys us you know journalists and fans and those moments man is is what, is what we really need Badly, right? For sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me guys ask you about Rarest of Birds. A, a beautiful song, like I said, very powerful. Uh, it struck a chord because I was recently in Sedona, actually. In, in, so it's like, so I kind of, you know, I still have some remnants of that energy. But I wanted to ask you, of course, produced by Alan Blickle. Tell us about like recording in the desert, like an album that's desert based. You know, you think about U2, the Joshua Tree or... Um, so many great records, Queens of the Stone Age that they've done in Joshua, uh, Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, what, what, what was that experience like to, to record in this, in this setting? Well, uh, Rarest of Birds with Alan, actually. We did that pretty much mostly at his studio in Venice. In Venice, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. That, was, that was all gotcha. kind of the Venice Beach thing. And that was the first time that we turned over the reins uh, of to, him. to somebody else for an entire album. Uh, Got it, okay. Uh, like Adam was describing earlier for the process now with Rich, um, that was a really cool thing because we got to kind of just wear the hat of artist and musician yeah. and vocalist, whatever, um, as opposed to having the producer hat on as well. Yeah. Uh, so it was a really nice kind of simplification, I think, of, of the process for us. Um, not to mention that we were recording at Alan's studio in Venice and it was really casual. And we'd pop in for a few hours in the afternoon and work. And then the next day, maybe we'd work 10 hours. And the next day, you know, we'd get together on a Saturday and listen back to stuff and just kind of hang yeah. out. So that was a really cool experience. And then this newest stuff that we that we just put out that Rich mm -hmm. produced, um, that's a lot of the material that we wrote kind of either about the desert with the desert in mind, or when we actually were in Joshua Tree as a band, we took a writing trip out there. Two that's writing awesome. Trips, actually. Um, and we're really influenced by everything. And it's, it's a magical place. We love Joshua Tree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, I mean, listen, what's next for you guys? Are you guys releasing some new songs soon? A, a new EP, a new album? Like, like, what can we expect from Grizzfolk? We have a lot of stuff I'm coming down the coming Can't down wait, the wait, man. Actually, uh, can we announce? I think so. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah. World premiere, what, what's breaking news? What's happening? Breaking news. Uh, all right, so we, we are doing a holiday song, a Christmas song. Oh, that's great. This year. And uh, we got Kyle Gass from Tenacious D on, on the oh, track. Oh, that's phenomenal. That's great. So he's a friend that's of awesome. It just, it seemed fitting. So we have You see, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. And that's what I've been talking to some artists recently. This kind of shit is genius. And I don't know if it would have happened without a global pandemic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. It's been the, the, this whole artistic strands of great people like you guys. It's been amazing. Great for all of us. And the holiday song in particular, <clears throat> of course, we didn't, we didn't record with Kyle in person. You know, we sent him the, the tracks and the song and he did his thing in his safe space. And then yeah. us, we finished it off in our own little safe space. 
So you guys, have you guys become like really good at all that? Like recording, sending, uploading, dropboxing, all that shit? Like, how does that process work? It's gotten better than I ever hoped to be at it. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, we're great at it, I guess. There's no substitute for the real thing, like you were saying earlier, too. Whether right. that's concerts and performances or even just writing and recording in the room together. There's, yeah. there's no substitute for the real thing. Can't yeah. wait. Can't wait. Well, listen, Adam, Bill, you guys have said it all. You gave us some breaking news. Listen, we can't wait to see you guys live on the road again. Um, if, I may, if, I, if I may vouch for South Florida, next time you guys are on tour, I know you guys go to Atlanta, you guys go to North Carolina, dip yeah. a little Southern. We always would love to have you guys. We love South Florida, man. Can't Perfect, wait. man. Awesome, guys. We'll keep Thank rocking. Thanks, Thanks for the great tunes, guys. Thanks, of course. Thanks, All right, man. Take Bye. care, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.